What is happening, everybody? It is Monday. What is it? June 3rd. We are halfway through the year already. Insane. Welcome to the show, and thank you for tuning in every week. And I want to thank a lot of people out there for the uh, big love that they uh, uh, showed me for the uh, the episodes over the last, I don't know, a few weeks. Mark was on, Death Angel, talking uh, Carrie King. Uh, what else do we have on? We had, uh, oh, I had a, a couple solo episodes and people, uh, people have been reaching out. So thank you so much. Also, bonus episodes are on patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. And I just put a new one up on Friday. So dig into that one and uh, enjoy the Patreon tour dates. Going to just run the tour dates real quick. Then we'll get into the show. I got to do that because that's um, why I'm here mostly to uh, let you guys know about the tour dates. So you come out, you go, I like the podcast, man. I'll check the comedy. Let's see this week, Belco arena, two nights with Bill Burr Wednesday and Thursday. We're out there in Denver. And then, uh, what is that? Saturday, we go to the Bay Area, an old stomping ground of mine, the Greek Theater. I am finally going to do the Greek Theater. And that pretty much clicks off all the dream venues in the Bay Area, except for, of course, the Cow Palace. So hoping that happens. Following week, I will be four nights in San Jose with Bill at the San Jose Civic the place where I saw Dio and Queensryche. I've talked about it before. The queen of the rock. <laughs> Man, that fucking Jeff Tate, G off Tate, depending on who you're talking to. G off Tate, Jeff Tate, Queensryche. What a voice, huh? Um, anyway, so that's happening. Then I'm going to be headlining at the uh, Minneapolis Great club, Acme. And uh, I'm hoping to shoot that, possibly, to get rid of uh, this material I've been doing. And uh, if everything works out, I hope to uh, shoot some uh, comedy there. Who knows? I'm uh, <laughs> fucking, it's a one-man show over here, and I'm just uh, trying to get it uh, all together. And then Vegas, I'll be there for a week at the Comedy Cellar. And uh, that place is great at the Rio Hotel. Then Springfield, Missouri, the Blue Room. So those are the tour dates. We've got that out of the way, right? Go to the website, deandelray.com, and uh, get a ticket. Please help it out. Help it out. <laughs> I don't know. I'm fucking kind of out of it. I haven't got a lot of sleep here. In the last couple of days, I had Gertie's birthday, which was on Thursday. Gertie turned eight, my beautiful dog. And then on Saturday morning, I woke up and she was squealing, which she never does. Gertie doesn't make any sounds unless the Amazon guy comes to the door. Other than that, she doesn't. She was squealing and I was like, oh, shit, what's going on? And I guess... She somehow has a pinched nerve in her neck. And it's not, from what I can tell, not too major. But I had to take her to the vet on Sunday morning because all night she just sat up. Uh, she couldn't lay down. She just stood there. And I stayed up with her all night. And, uh, and I can't really, like, hug her or anything because I don't want her to. I don't know where it's at. And the vet doesn't either. He, he checked around. So it's kind of like a, a ghost pinch ne uh, nerve. And he kind of compared it to like when we wake up with like a stiff neck, you know, when you got that fucking stiff neck out of nowhere, you're driving and you forget you have it. And then you look to the left to, to switch lanes. You're like, oh, fuck. And after a while, it, it's so stiff that you're like, fuck it. I don't care if there's a car there anyway. And you just switch lanes without, without fucking looking. That's how bad your neck hurts. You know, that goddamn, that's fucking, I've been through it, man. Necks uh, from the motorcycle crash, uh, lower back years and years ago. But uh, I do a lot of stretching and uh, had a little surgery and I am uh, 
way, way fucking better. I'm thinking about doing Pilates. Yes. Oh, look at this libertard. He drinks oat milk and does Pilates. Ah, gross. <laughs> I'm going to try it out, though. I was talking to Allison Mosshart, and if you've never seen The Kills or Allison perform with the dead weather, she is fucking great and goes for it in, like, you know, 10-inch high platform shoes kiss style, just rocking, and she's like, yeah, I do Pilates and it brings it all back together. So I'm going to try a little Pilates, shiny and new for you. <laughs> I don't know why I sang it in the love boat. The love boat fucking song. Pilates, shiny and new for you. That love boat song was a hit. That fucker will stick in your head, right? Pilates. Um. <laughs> I'm fucking nuts. Anyway, so I've got Gertie here. She's over here out cold right now. We gave her a cortisone shot and uh, and some uh, muscle relaxers and and painkillers. And we're just I'm I'm home for a few days and I'll just give her the full Gertie love that she deserves. This dog deserves everything, like the the best living ever. I've given her a little. Uh, oh, on her birthday, she got salmon and ice cream. Now, this dog, I don't give this dog any sugar. She's, I don't, I don't give her anything I wouldn't fucking eat. You know, I'm not eating sugar. But once a year, she gets a little ice cream. And man, does she fucking love it. She just gobbles it up. So, and then she got some salmon. Uh, no spices. Just fresh, you know, uh, pan, pan uh, seared or whatever. Heat it up. And uh, she gobbled it down. I took her up to the Griffith Park up there by the observatory for her birthday. She got her uh, birthday hat on, eight years old. And, uh, oh, my God, love her. Love her. And she's going to be okay. I know it. And if not, I'm going to take her over to the dog chiropractor. And I saw this guy. He fuck, He's an animal chiropractor. And he uh, adjusted a, a fucking giraffe on Instagram. A fucking giraffe. How do you even find the spot where the neck, it, the giraffe has the longest, it's all fucking neck. How do you find the the spot where it's uh, it's pinched or, or, you know, the vertebrae are locked or what? I mean, he, he got up on this platform and he's just kind of, God, I love giraffes. Fuck anybody that's ever shot a giraffe, by the way. Fuck you. Uh, giraffe, one of the most beautiful creatures on the planet. But he got up on a platform and he just like, hello, Mr. Giraffe. And they got those crazy little horns. Giraffes are so fucking cool. They're just so, first of all, their pattern. They've got like a kind of art deco pattern. Just the fucking tan cool spots. Man, like it's so weird their 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 layout, and then they got the little mini horns, and he got up on the platform. And he's just like, "Hello, Mr. Giraffe," and just adjust it. And the giraffe was like, "Oh," gave him hugs. <laughs> giraffe, it is fucking crazy. Anyway, so Gertie is here, and I didn't get a lot of sleep over the weekend because, um. I just stayed up to make sure she was okay. It's unreal how fucking awful I can feel with no sleep. I just think back to the old days of doing blow, how I never slept. And now if I don't sleep one night, like, uh, you know, uh, red eye flights or, uh, you know, Gertie up all night with Gertie, anything one night of no sleep, it is crazy how fucking awful I feel. I mean, I'm just completely out of it. Like, you know, yesterday, Sunday, I was just like out of it. I had to go do comedy and I, I don't even remember doing the set. I just drove over. I did a, a 15 minute set and I was got home and uh, right back with Gertie and she was just sleeping. And I was like, God damn, I went to bed at nine. And woke up this morning at nine. So that's why uh, the podcast, what is it? Oh, it's a little late. It's noon right now on a Monday. 
Uh, oh, fuck. I don't want to forget this. A sponsor. We have a sponsor this week. Yes. You guys into gambling? You into betting? Online betting? Did you watch the UFC over the weekend? Did you bet on it? Don't go anywhere else. X bet. If you're passionate about sports and looking for a thrill, you need to check out the freshly redesigned X bet. They're calling in. The, they're calling it the last sports book you'll ever join. I've been playing on X bet and they really do have it all. Whether it's odds on basketball, combat sports, or even betting on the next Bitcoin dip. And the best part is when you win, you get paid quick. But it's not just about placing bets. XBet is a whole experience. They support athletes and sports shows just like ours, and they give back to the community with tons of free bets and cash prize contests. Did I mention that they also have a casino now? Oh, yes, a casino. Spin the slots. Play some roulette or try your luck on live tables, all from mobile platforms that lets you enjoy fun on the go. Whether you're super into sports betting or just curious about trying it out, you need a site that makes it fun and easy. That's why you've got to check out XBet. Sign up today using the promo code and get the generous bonus of up to $1,000 on your first deposit. That's right, promo code for free cash bonus to kickstart the betting journey. With so many great UFC cards on the horizon and baseball season in full swing, there's never been a better time to play. Make your next bet X bet. Okay. The code is promo, P-R-O-M-O. -O. So use the code P-R-O-M-O -O for your free cash bonus. Oh, man, this is a good deal. Anyway, that was a big UFC fight over the weekend. And you could have had a bet in. Code is P-R-O-M-O. -O, X bet. All right. Here we go. Sponsor. What do you think, guys? Ooh. Um, okay, let's get into some stuff. So I was home and uh with Gertie, and you know, I decided to sign up for a uh free trial of Hulu so I can watch the Bon Jovi doc now. Growing up in the 80s, Bon Jovi, of course, was one of the biggest. There was a, a real big uh, kind of uh, line in the sand, real big, during the time of uh, early 80s San Francisco. You got the thrash metal people that were like, kill posers. And then you have the glam bands that were coming up uh, and not like uh, T-Rex glam, but you know what I'm talking about. Motley Crue, uh, Quiet Riot, Rat. And then there was Bon Jovi. And uh, there was that whole fucking, you know, Kill Posers and all of that, which was funny because if you grew up in San Fran like myself, you would see uh, people like uh, Hetfield or Paul Bailoff or uh, Gary Holt or the Exodus guys, you would see them at a, a, a rat concert. You would see them at Quiet Riot. You would see them at these, uh, you know, rock shows. And, uh, it, I, you know, I think back to it now and just think about a uh, perfect example, Gary Holt over the weekend went to go see Skid Row in Sacramento with Lizzie Hale singing and he posted it up and, you know, Back in the day, boy, you know, if somebody posted that up, they'd be like, oh, fuck that hair, hairspray, tongue, you know, fucking uh, hair metal. They didn't call it that back then. But but all, everybody cross pollinated. Everybody went to go hang out because it was a rock scene. And maybe there was girls there or whatever. But it was mostly because there was some fucking loud guitars. There was beer and people were hanging, you know, doing a little toot going out every night, just diving deep into rock, whether it be uh, speed metal or uh, glam, whatever you want to do. But Jovi is, uh, you know, some people would look at it as like, fuck that shit, you know, and I had talked about it. I had David Bryan on years ago when I was living in New York, the keyboard player for Bon Jovi, and I had gave, gave him uh, 
very high uh, praise. And I was always a Jovi fan in a way of mostly the songwriting I thought was incredible. And I've talked about it over and over on this podcast for years. You know, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it really truly is about songs. And Bon Jovi would be the uh, perfect example of that. But with uh, John Bon Jovi, when you watch this documentary on Hulu, it's four parts. And I highly recommend watching it because with a documentary, uh, um, uh, about a band, maybe it's a band, maybe you don't like. It's really about success and learning uh, how they got to somewhere, work ethic, songwriting, whatever it is. You know, I remember one time I was telling somebody to watch the Twisted Sister doc, and they're like, yeah, fuck that. I don't like that band. And I was like, it's not about that. That should be the reason you watch it, uh, number one reason, because if you, hated something and they came became widely successful don't you want to hear the story i i do you know uh somebody was telling me you know hey man you know like it or not taylor swift you know she sells more records than anybody and i was like well mcdonald's sells more food than anybody but that doesn't make it good but i do want to know the story and I don't knock Taylor Swift at all, at all. I don't knock anyone that's uh, made a success in something because 99.9% .9 of the time, when you get down and hear their story, you're like, oh, well, they just fucking, you know, they just fucking worked hard. Because even in a uh, world where you think, uh, what is that, nepotism or what, what, that nepo baby stuff where they're like, ah, Fuck that person. They just got it because their dad was famous. There was a girl recently. Uh, I think her, uh, who's her mom and dad is, uh, oh, God, fucking drawing a blank. But she was on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and she embraced it. She was like, yeah, man, my parents are famous, and so I got a shot. And I, I love that because, you know, the the things I hate are rich kids that don't ever do shit. And they try stuff and then quit. Like, I'm going to try comedy. And then they're like, nah, you know, I'm going to uh, make records. Nah, you know, and they're just rich and they just fucking don't do shit. But people that uh, make it for long fucking periods of time, Jovi, 40 years, it's definitely something there there's not like people like let's just make bon jovi famous for 40 years uh you know he can just sit back on the couch and drink some beers and watch the giants play football and we'll just keep this machine going that has definitely never happened and when you watch the actual grind of john bon jovi it makes me even love him more now like i said do i like all his songs no, I've listened to all the records over and over back in the day and recently again to dive in to see what I like. Somebody told me, ah, he only has one fucking song. Totally not true. A hundred percent not true. Uh, he has one giant one probably, Wanted Dead or Alive, but he has a million great songs. And one of them, I've said it over and over, is the greatest uh ballad i would say of the entire history of uh that glam hair metal whatever you want to call it from 83 ish 82 ish to 90 right around 91 you got all the bands out there you got guns and roses like i said rat you got tesla you got fucking um you got uh quiet riot Bon Jovi, uh, who else were some of the big ones there? Um, shit, I'm drawing a blank on them because I don't really listen to any of the bands really, except for uh, G and R still. And I've even over the last couple of years, I've kind of finally uh, got a little burnt on G and R, mostly the um, the Appetite stuff. I'm like, all right, I've listened to Appetite 
uh, enough. Uh, that's why I, I love the illusion record so much, but Bon Jovi has that song. I'll be there for you. And watching the documentary, I realized, you know, he, he, you know, he's grinding it out early on 16, 17 years old in that same scene that Southside Johnny and Bruce Springsteen are deep in out there in free note, Jersey, freehold Jersey. Uh, and, you know, in those clubs, the stone pony and all these uh, clubs, he's grinding it out. He's in high school. He's got a seven piece band. They got horns and shit. And they're basically a cover band. Bruce kind of gets some uh, wind on him and goes and sits in one of the songs. Uh, you know, Jovi's doing like a, a Springsteen song. And, and then Jovi quickly realizes, you know, I'm not going to get anywhere being a cover band and starts looking at the people he respects like Springsteen and starts to uh, write his own songs, breaks off from the cover band, gets a, uh, an intern job at the uh, studio in New York. What was it? The sound fucking one of those studios, the big one in New York learns the game writes run away and shops it around gets a, uh, no from everybody this is always what i love about uh somebody that makes it like twisted sister no 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 and this is the kind of shit that keeps me going in the comedy world and then he gets an idea to have a dj play it that dj in new york waap i think it was decides to uh get him on this compilation record they play it at seven stations now John Bon Jovi needs a band. He gets the best dudes in Jersey and puts them together to showcase and they just become a band. And next thing you know, it's fucking off to the races. They put out the first record. I saw them on that tour. They opened for the Scorpions. They talked about how people were whizzing quarters and throwing shit at them and booing. They stayed in it. Uh, then they put 7,800 Fahrenheit out, which, um, had a couple good songs on it. Then they put out the fucking monster Slippery When Wet. And uh, done up there in Vancouver, Bob Rock engineering it. Bruce Fair, Fair, Fairborn, Fairbane. <laughs> Bruce, uh, who was the big 80s uh, producer, did it. And they explode. Now, when you watch them from Slippery When Wet through the New Jersey tour, the amount of fucking dates this guy sang, and it's a lot like that Back in Black tour. If you look up the Back in Black tour, these fuckers had to sing every night. There was really no days off for years. I mean, even when you're 21, two, three, four, and you're running on uh, energy or, you know, on, um, you know, you're running on fucking just fumes uh, provided by fame and uh, adrenaline and just the machine booking. Got to keep you going. Got to keep you going. It, it, that still just blows my mind. Uh, how many nights this guy fucking sang for years. Then chorus grunge comes and this kind of music kind of takes a back seat. But John Bon Jovi and, uh, you know, Doc McGee is a great, great fucking manager. They see a whole market out there in Europe and he just keeps going. He's like, USA is not listening to this music right now. But well, let's go to Hong Kong. Let's go to uh, let's go to London. Let's go to, uh, you know, Japan. Let's go to all these markets where they don't, you know, they're not fair weather. So they do that for like six, seven years. And then year 2000 comes, um, they put out this song, It's My Life. And a whole new fucking uh, army of fans that didn't even know about old school Jovi jump on. And this guy, I was just talking to someone yesterday, has been selling out stadiums since 2000 now. And uh, in 17, I believe it was, he had the biggest tour of the year, $378 million. Somewhere along the way, his voice went south. Now, this is really where I started watching it really hardcore because, you know, 
his voice went really, really south. And I was seeing the videos up there and I was like, oh man. And I was just feeling for this guy because when your voice is your your money maker, your the the way you you know make a living, it is absolutely scary. And last week when I was sick for a week, you just think about it like if I couldn't talk, this podcast wouldn't be going on today. And if I couldn't talk, I couldn't go on the road this week and go do Bill Co Arena with Bill. And, uh, you know, the voice, the singing, the talking, that is the most brutal gig to take on because the other guys could, you know, have a fucking 102, 100 fucking seven temperature and still play guitar, bass, or drums. They just get through it. But singing, man, and the amount of fucking work that guy had done all those years slowly was whittling away his voice. And I wanted to interview him more than anybody in the last couple of years because I wanted to talk to him about speaking of cortisone with Gertie. You know, a lot of singers back then, they'd lose their voice. They get a cortisone shot in the neck and they just keep fucking going because it's too expensive to cancel the tour. You got 300, 200 people working for you, whatever it is. You got the crew, you got the band, you have uh, the venues, the fans that flew out, and it becomes this thing. It's all on you. And, uh, you know, he's got an experimental surgery, and he's been working on his voice for two years. And holy shit. I feel for this guy, man. He's super rich. He doesn't need to do it. This guy is super fucking rich. He has done uh, something that most people have never done. He sold 130 million records in the era where people were still buying actual hard copies of cassettes, vinyl, and um, CDs. It's not about the money. And it's got to be a lot like a giant uh, superstar sports player a uh say a football player a quarterback really a quarterback i compare the singer to running the whole fucking thing one day you just can't play anymore now a lot of guys have that magic voice like dio and uh dudes like that that you know it's just natural and, and you know other guys have to work on it and warm up and and train their voice and everything. So it's very rare to see somebody that can sing like a uh, Jagger right now. He's 80 years old out on a full on tour. Sounded great. But there's other guys, you know, uh, that it's just, it's absolutely brutal. Don Dawkin comes to mind. I saw Dawkin about five years ago and I was like, man, you just feel for the guy. People are like, yeah, you look at the comments ah, fuck that guy. He can't sing anymore. And it is, uh, it is a rough ride. It is a rough ride. But I cannot recommend this documentary enough to just see what it's like to be in a band with five other guys all these years. Richie quit like seven years ago. And that's a, uh, an interesting story in there. And uh, a kind of a brutal story. And there's, uh, he, he leaves it all out there. He, he tells a lot of the uh, behind the scenes shit, which Bon Jovi, they had that, or what is that? Or Omorta? That's the old mob thing where you don't talk, you know, until the fucking rats and snitches came out in the last 15 years, 20 years. Back in the old days, you know, you just didn't talk about the inner workings of your, uh, your band. Or they didn't which I always felt was uh, pretty fucking cool because the bass player, I didn't have no idea, but the bass player never played on any of the records. Alex Such, that's his name, Alec. Alex, he's got a middle name there or something, but he never played on any of the records, never knew that. Wow. There's so many people that didn't play on their records over the entire history of music. It's wild to think about. 
But anyway, I can't recommend it enough. And I want to say this. I'm not a TV guy. You guys know that. I haven't watched TV in, um, what, like uh, 15 years since I started comedy. And I've, I've been kind of firing it up lately, mostly just for uh, some writing purposes, getting some ideas, um, you know. But uh, I want to say this. Hulu, which is funny. Netflix has uh, all this prestige and shit. You got to get your special on Netflix. If it doesn't, is it really a special? And I just don't think that they hold that weight anymore. It doesn't matter for me. I'm not on any of them, but I've been watching some Hulu over the weekend here and they have much more interesting shit, man. I'm, I'm kind of team Hulu <laughs> team Hulu dumb name. Like I said before, can't stand the name, but um you know, they got some cool shit on Hulu. I was watching this thing, The Dark Side of Comedy. It's a, It was a Vice series that uh, Hulu purchased. And uh, those are kind of hokey. You know, they're kind of those, uh, like a bad version of Behind the Music, you know? You know, Andrew Dice Clay had it all. One of those, you know, Chris Farley, The Crash. But... I can't stop watching them just because I like to watch stuff about comedy. I love watching. I don't watch specials, but I do love watching stuff about comedy, especially when it's so wrong. You're like, this is so dumb, but uh, Hulu's got some shit, man. And uh, you know, and also in this day and age of people releasing specials on YouTube and blowing up that way, say a Shane Gillis or uh uh, any of these other guys, Joe List, uh, Mark Norman, guys that uh, uh, release the specials, like I've said before, that format works if you have powerful friends that have you on the podcast to promote it. If you don't have uh, an access to promote it, your special could sit on YouTube and get about, you know, 5,000 views. But that could be the case, too, if you had it on Amazon Prime. Who the fuck knows? So it's really all about uh, wherever the fans will go to watch your special, whether it be on fucking YouTube, Hulu, Amazon, Netflix, uh, any other platforms. The bottom line is you have to have the people to get their eyes on it. Because if they don't, it doesn't matter what you're fucking on. Netflix used to be fucking powerful. They had billboards all up and down the Sunset Strip. You got a special it would fucking be everywhere. You'd, you'd be driving down Santa Monica Boulevard. Wow, fuck, look at that, Ali Wong. You're going down Sunset, oh shit, Ali Wong. You're over in uh, East Hollywood. Well, look at that fucking Ali Wong now. And it would be like a month. I think Jezelneck was talking about this. Now they put it up for like four days, you know, on the side of the Laugh Factory. And then it's gone because they got another special coming out. Like I said, there's so much shit out there streaming. I can't even remember what I've seen, man. Somebody reminded me a couple of days ago, I saw that movie Civil War. I had already forgotten that I saw that film just in my skull and out. That is, uh, that is a sad thing. And like I said, the, the last film that really stuck with me was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and The Power of Dog and Oppenheimer. Those are the three where I was like, this is some fucking good filmmaking speaking of power of dog happy pride month everybody this is where uh, some people turn off oh fuck you happy pride Whoa. yeah fuck yeah happy pride 100 percent happy pride man uh pride month somebody went to an adele concert over the weekend in vegas and they said pride sucks and that blew my mind because it was obviously the guy had to buy a ticket. There's no way he was an Adele fan and would go and say pride sucks because Adele, uh, you know, a lot of her audience is gay. Maybe some of the uh, people in her band could be gay, the crew, whatever. Obviously Adele, that's like going to Elton John pride sucks. So they had to buy a ticket which is probably like, you know, on the low end, 500 bucks, Adele in Vegas, come on. 
Then they got to, you know, fly out there. Maybe they live in Vegas, but probably not. Get a room and then get in there, sit down and then just wait for the moment. Okay, when she sings Chasing Pavements, that's when I'm going to become a star. I'm going to be known. Then it comes on, Chasing Pavements, gets down there, a low drop in. Pride sucks. Oh, my God. Imagine he's like, I did it. I did it. And then the entire arena just starts booing you. <laughs> and, and then Adele lights you up. Just get the fuck out of here. And that probably made the guy feel even better. He's like, I fucking showed them. I went into their fucking stomping grounds and told them pride sucks. I'm a star. Somebody look at me. Somebody fucking, you know? Oh, my God. That fucking, the work that it took to do that. Could have just stayed home and did it on Twitter, like uh, like a true fucking, you know, troll. But nah, you wanted to blow your money. You actually put money in Adele's pocket. <laughs> oh man! Uh, speaking of uh, tours, speaking of tours, check out these professional fucking segues. Speaking of tours, the Black Keys have uh, scaled down their tour to theaters. And uh, they were booked in arenas. They put a record out last month that nobody really even uh, talks about. And I don't think that that has anything to do with if it's a good record or bad record. I have not heard it, uh, you know, because uh, I'm busy, uh, busy listening to some other records right now. But I will get to the Black Keys. But um, they were booked for the arenas. Now, they played arenas, I think, like five, six years ago. And, the, and Black Keys, I saw the Black Keys when I was working for the Stones in 02, 03, or 04, whenever it was, between 02 and 06. I saw them in London at a small little fucking club. I rode a, a train out there on our night off solo. I went into some small little fucking club, little, you know, sweat box and watched these two guys destroy. And in, at no point did I ever think this band one day is going to be in the arenas. They just weren't that type of band to me. It was like a band that, you know, it was kind of like king of the hipsters. You just go down and you see these two guys just and there was no A.C., in the building, of course, because it's London. They got no fucking AC in any of London. But uh, since the climate change, uh, yeah, climate change is fake. Um, London's been getting some ACs. I think that's the number one job, they said. People are moving from uh, United States to the UK to install ACs for the rest of their lives because... They need ACs everywhere now because it's a million degrees, which this week I saw it's going to be like 111 in Texas and Phoenix and, and Vegas. It, we're about to scorch. L.A. has been foggy for six weeks now. It's foggy right now. And I'm like, I'll take this as long as it'll go because I know what's coming. And uh, so anyway, I saw the Black Keys and I loved them for a few records and then they got huge and started doing arenas. And then, uh, you know, Dan started producing records. Fucking worked with, uh, my good friend, Marcus King. And they, uh, you know, they've had a seriously amazing career. At some point they put a record out and they probably sat down with live nation and their team. Let's get the team together. We're going to get the team together and we're going to uh, we're going to uh, assess your uh, your next couple years strategies. We got to put together a strategy. I never fucking people say that in the business. My skin crawls. We got to got to put together a strategy here. Now, look, I don't have any strategy. That's why I'm where I'm at. I get it. But also just having some dudes look at you whenever they say we got to put a 
put together a strategy. That means we got to put together some kind of fucking uh, formula that's going to pay for my two houses, my one in Nantucket and the other one over in Malibu and my four kids college and my two divorces. We got to put together a formula a strategy on how to keep my 10% coming in huge. And then maybe the black keys were like, yeah, you know, I don't know. We've been gone a while. Why don't we do some uh, theaters? We like to do some theaters, you know, it, uh, you know, get back in there with the fans. Oh, fuck. No, no. Theaters don't pay for my, uh, two divorces and my Nantucket house. No, fuck. No, we're going arenas. You guys are still an arena band. I don't know. We were never really an arena band. We just kind of had a couple big, big songs. And uh, and then, boom, we had the Fair Weather fans, a lot like uh, uh, Kings of Leon. And they came out for a couple years. And thank God they did, because now we can play any kind of venues we want for the rest of our lives and keep doing art. No, nah, it's not art. That's not a strategy. Look, you're going to do fucking, you're going to do the Staples Center. You're going to do the garden. You're going to do fucking, don't worry. It's going to be multiple nights. It's going to be great. And they put it on sale and there's fucking no tickets sold. Well, that's what it looks like. No tickets sold. But when you look at it, there is a lot of tickets sold. If it was a theater tour, it would have been sold out. And nobody would have said, ah, Black Keys, they're fucking, nobody digs them anymore. Look, they're in the theaters now. They used to be an arena act. That is the main fucking uh, bummer of, uh, you know, once you get to an arena act. Because fucking theaters are fantastic. You know what else is great? Sold out clubs. Yeah, man. Anything that's sold out is great. Where you don't have to constantly be on Instagram going, hey, man. Get tickets to see me out there in, uh, you know, Springfield, Missouri. I really need people to come out. Anytime you don't have to have your team tweet for you every couple hours to get tickets, which is fucking the only thing I hate about the biz. Now, there's two things I hate about the biz. The constant social media and the airports. It's the only two things. So I'm pretty fucking lucky. I feel okay, man. It's like some people hate everything they do. I only hate two things. And it's the uh, airport and social media. <laughs> anyway, if they would have booked a tour, it would have been great. A, a theater tour. It would have been sold out and everybody would be like, oh, fuck yeah, man. I'm going to go see, uh, you know, the Black Keys at the Fillmore. It's going to be Scorcher. And that's just the fucking truth. And the true fans would be in there. They'd be like, all right, we don't have those goddamn fucking wine drinking cougars in here, you know, just fucking it up, talking during the show. <laughs> so, and that really comes down to, in my thought, is uh, Live Nation owning all the venues. And, and you know, Somebody said, what do you think? You know, they're getting sued right now. They're, people are going after them. I'm like, they've been going after them since Pearl Jam back in fucking, I don't know, 2002, when Pearl Jam found that spot that is now known as Coachella to do uh, a show and book their own tour. So I'm telling you, man, it is, uh, it is a rough ride out there. People are canceling their tours. Now, J-Lo... That was just some bad, uh, it, her team, her team should be fired right away because anybody looking at the JLo thing, the doc and the record coming out and, uh, the tour, the arena tour, anybody should have just said like, Hey, no, nah, man, no. Nah, yeah. You, you know, like people do not remember, uh, Jenny on the block. That was years and years ago. Uh, the kids are into Taylor Swift. And they're into um, Olivia Rodrigo, oh, Rodriguez, what's her name? And uh, who's got, she's good, man. I said, that song, what is it? Driver's License or something? I saw her on SNL, good. Uh, and they're into Beyonce. J-Lo's a long time ago. J-Lo is definitely uh, a long time ago. And that type of act is uh, definitely... 
fair weather fans, you know? So it is uh, going to be an interesting ride over the next couple of years to see who uh, does some adjustments of ego. If it is the band that says, nah, man, I only want to do arenas or adjustments on the business side. We will see what's going on. That's the beauty of comedy. If you do get up to an arena level and then you, you drop back down into theaters, it's still fucking great. I mean, I look at Russell Peters or somebody like Burr. Uh, these guys, Russell Peters would do six months of clubs, working up a new hour. And then he'll go out and do some theaters and then he'll, he'll taste around the market and he'll do some arenas. And the same with Bill. Bill's in the clubs fucking every week, man. He's in the comedy store. He'll go over, he'll do flappers. He'll do fucking uh, some indie show in some guy's backyard. Bill fucking, he didn't even need to leave the goddamn house. But he loves doing comedy. And he knows, just like I know, if you get to the fucking arenas, that's fucking great. If you don't, it's really all about getting to do the thing. That's what I say every week on here. I'm just happy I get to do the fucking thing at 58 years old. Which, I, which by the way, shout out to Joey Diaz. Talked to him a couple of days ago. He's been going out to the mothership and uh, working up some new, uh, some new comedy. And man, it makes me so happy to see him back on stage. And the mothership is perfect for him. Uh, the people love him. Joe loves him. He loves the people out there and he can really find the new material and, uh, and, and, and dig in with some friends. So uh, hats off to my man, Joey Diaz. Love the guy. God, he's so great. A uh, couple things that we'll get out. Anyway, thank you for um, always tuning in here. I really, really appreciate it. I do want to give a quick shout out. Rival Sons are on tour in Europe. And they're doing a U.S. tour with Clutch, so get some tickets. Uh, also, my man Marcus King is out there doing it still. And uh, constantly uh, digging into uh, some of my favorite bands, tour dates, and shouting them out so I can uh, make sure you guys know that. Uh, last thing I want to talk about. Speaking of Bon Jovi, people are like, ah, fuck that guy. I think one of the King... Fuck that, guys, is uh, Vanilla Ice from back in the day. Now, I was never a Vanilla Ice fan. Um, I was around during that hip-hop era of MC Hammer, Vanilla Ice, and all of these guys that made it huge on MTV, Rico Suave. Um, these guys that were fucking massive. But I will tell you something that blows my fucking mind. And, you know, there's people out there that are like fucking van vanilla ice, fucking disgusting, whatever they're going to think. Rob Van Winkle. Uh, I found out early on, years and years and years ago, my buddy Ross Robinson did a metal record with vanilla ice. And uh, when he first told me that, I was like, fucking what? And then you start to realize somebody like Vanilla Ice, uh, he, this guy has been successful his entire life. And most people talk about like whatever happened to Vanilla Ice. If you, if you don't really have any idea, which most people don't, this guy, I mean, I what brought it up was today I stumbled across this video of his car collection on YouTube. So I started watching it. And I've, I've been on the radar of Vanilla Ice the last couple of years because I follow a lot of real estate. I love real estate. I love uh, if I made some good money, I would definitely get into the real estate market. I enjoy it. It's uh, it's brutal. It's it's scary. It's more money than anything now in the U.S. But I started seeing Vanilla Ice popping up in my feeds. Now, Vanilla Ice had the huge, huge fucking hit, Ice Ice Baby and all that. Toured. He was giant. Then he disappeared. Then he kind of had a resurgence. 
with people that are like, oh, yeah, this is funny, Vanilla Ice. Then he did a metal record. Uh, but another couple things that he's been doing over his career, he was a, a giant pro motocross racer and won hundreds and hundreds of races. He raced fucking dirt bikes, Honda CR125. The guy is fucking insane. Then he raced jet skis. But then he had this show, um, house flipping and re, you know, uh, redoing houses and shit. And this guy has been making crazy money in the real estate business. He, I think he's 57 or around my age. He looks fucking amazing, man. He, you know, this guy in, in most people's eyes would be one of those dudes you see on behind the music. He had it all. He had hits. He had women. He had money. Then he killed himself, you know, cause like these people, they can't handle stardom and they go crazy. I mean, perfect example, Britney Spears fucking has been cooked here for years. <laughs> oh man. Her Instagram is crazy. Anyway, Vanilla Eyes had the show flipping houses and shit. And then he started, uh, he found a kind of a, a way to buy houses um, from tax liens. Now, I never knew this, but let's say a house goes into foreclosure and the, uh, the bank takes it and the, the house is owed a bank note and it's owed an HOA note. Let's say it's a condo. And there's all kinds of money owed on it. But the most important thing is there's a, a government tax lien put on it because they didn't pay their property taxes. Vanilla Ice has found a way, or I'm sure he didn't find it. Somebody told him about it, he said. But what he does is he pays a lawyer to find houses that have tax liens and say the house is worth a million dollars and the tax lien's like 200000 you just pay the tax lien and you own the house. The government wipes all the other debt away, like bank debts, HOA debts, anything. And you own the house. So this guy pays a lawyer like five grand a month to find all these uh, houses for him. He goes and uh, looks in uh, the government tax files, which is totally legal. And then he uh, gives the info to Vanilla Ice and Vanilla Ice buys these fucking houses. He doesn't rent them. He doesn't sell them. He just sits on them and lets the fucking equity grow. Then he draws loans against that equity and buys other houses. This guy's a goddamn fucking mogul. He's just out there living like a king. And I'm watching this video of him with his cars. <clears throat> And he seems so fucking happy and genuine. He could give a fuck what someone says about him on a DM on a Saturday night, eating, you know, fucking pints of Ben and Jerry's with their diabetes in the corner of fucking America. I'll show vanilla ice. Fuck you. You never were fucking good. You fucking piece of fucking shit. He doesn't give up. Fuck, this guy looks great. His cars, he's got this car that Dean Martin owned and it was a Continental. It's not Lincoln. I never knew this and I'm a car guy. Lincoln Continental was a company and it, it, it still is. But at one point, they were two companies. They were Lincoln and they were Continental. I didn't know that. And in like 1957, Continental had the most expensive car uh, in the world over Rolls Royce and everything. He owns this one. It was $14,000 in uh, 1957. And most cars were like two and three and 4,000 back then. It was the most expensive car in the fifties. And it is insane. It had early air conditioning that went through the roof panels and shit. He's showing it to you. I'll put it up on my uh, Instagram and my Patreon. Uh, he's got the car from Eddie Murphy, um, the 48 Hours one, with Nick Nolte punches Eddie Murphy in the face. He's got that Cadillac. He owns that. He's got, um, uh, 
He's got a famous, uh, what is his name? Uh, fuck, Irwindale. That guy, he's got a famous Mopar. He has unreal rides, man. He's got his original, still has it, the Ice Ice Baby Mustang 5.0. This guy, man, when you look at this video, I got goosebumps because I was just like, fucking good for this guy, man. You know, he made a bunch of money. And then fucking his fame went away. He doesn't give a fuck. He just keeps going. He's not like, oh, I, you know who I was? He is 1% of the entertainment business that realized, hey, man, I got lucky. And now I'm parlaying this money into other shit. And I fucking look great. And I'm wealthy. I'm a fucking, I'm a goddamn entrepreneur. I'm a, a real estate mogul. And uh, and he's still out there riding motorcycles and driving these fucking rad cars. He has an insane lowrider. His lowrider won number one in the uh, in the world of lowrider magazine and and lowrider shows. He has like the best lowrider. Blew my mind. So fucking hats off, hats off, man, to these people that are soldiers. Twisted sister. Fuck them. That ain't music. Vanilla eyes. Fuck that bullshit. I know friends right now. They'd be like, oh, they fucking suck. Fuck those guys, you know? And it's like, who cares? <laughs> anyway, you've got to see this video. Uh, hold on. I'll tell you what it is just while you're listening, just in case. It's called, the video is called, oh, which by the way, I'm going through this. Uh, I've been drinking this. Sanzo, S-A-N-Z-O. It's not an ad, but I've been trying to find sparkling waters that don't have PFAs. I was a Topo Chico guy, fully addicted to it and loved it. It really helped me through my uh, quitting sugar, but it turns out it's got a bunch of shit in it. So Sanzo or Spindrift are the two that are really clean with real, real juice, no chemicals and shit, no sugar. Sanzo, check it out. Anyway, here it is. The video is under Vanilla Ice's car collection. It's a 14 minute video. He's fucking smiling the whole time. He looks amazing. And uh, let me get into the comments. That's what I really liked about the comments was uh, his first comment here. That's that's really what life is, right? Comments. <laughs> let me see. What the Fucking this fucking bullshit. God damn it. Can't stand uh, when the ads pop up. Here it is. Ice is 57, looks 27. Uh, next comment. Extremely refreshing to see a celebrity actually know about and care about the cars in his collection. Next, next one. I'm so happy to see him thriving. He deserves it. Keep doing your thing, Ice. Now, this is what I think happens in America. You get big and they're like, fuck, yeah, I love this guy. And then at one point they go, I fucking hate him. Boo. And they fucking shit on you. And you go down and you burn to the fucking ground. Kind of like a Limp Biscuit. A lot of people don't even know Limp Biscuit. I'm mentioning bands right now. They're like, who are you, Dean? I'm mentioning bands that are still in the game making crazy money and shit. And people are just, you know, I'm just mentioning it because... Once you can pick yourself up and you dust yourself off and go, you know what? I don't care what you say. This is what I do. Then the people turn around again. So we love you. Then we fucking hate you. And then you turn around and they go, hey, you know what? Fuck yeah, man. Good for him. And that is a small, small inkling of, of what I wish the entire world was like of just like, you know what? Fucking right on for that guy. You know, we need some more right on for that. You know, whatever, whatever they fucking, whatever you think their personal things or their, their music you don't like or their haircut or their fucking cars or whatever. Next one. Uh, Vanilla is over 50. My guy looks and dresses like he's 20 and keeps it timeless. Keep it up. Ice is also a carpenter and does some pretty nice remodeling. His knowledge of real estate is impressive. Man of many talents. 
Next comment. Dude is winning the game of life. Well done, Vanilla. I mean, these are all fucking positive. He is so authentic, gives off such a cool vibe. Glad he's doing well. Really love eyes. Next one. He seems at peace and happy. Also seems like a genuinely good guy. Who would who would have thought that that dude gets used as a punchline is one of the truly uh, great humans living life outside of the rap world. Good for him. Next one. I'm actually amazed at his car collection. And... Um, he knows his stuff, too. His attention to detail is very impressive. It goes on and on and on and on. It is fucking wild. So good for you, buddy. Good for you. Positive, uh, you know, positive fucking feet. What is that? Positive, positive fucking whatever, you know, just pos oh, positive vibes. <laughs> positive vibes for you, my man. And that video got me out of bed today and uh, and makes me fucking march on in my career. You know, thank you. Uh, Rob Van Winkle, I believe. Vanilla Ice. Thank you, buddy. And thank you guys for tuning in. Have a great week. See you in Denver. See you in Berkeley, California. See you in San Jose. See you in Minneapolis. See you in Las Vegas. See you in Springfield, Missouri. I cannot thank you guys enough for tuning into this podcast every week. Candles are lit.